Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to look at the UT216C current clamp from Unitrend. If you'd have seen my previous video on earth leakage clamps, this made a brief appearance just to highlight some of the differences between a, a specialist clamp like the DCM305E and a more general purpose current clamp like this UT216C here. Uh, and since the coil adapter and the injection test set was out for testing the earth leakage clamps, I thought it'd be rude not to do some tests on this uh, Unitrend current clamp here. So the instrument I got from Amazon, uh, it retails on Amazon for around about 100 to 120 pounds. You can get it cheaper on eBay, but you do have to pay import taxes and handling fees, courier handling fees, if you choose to go down that route. So may not be too much of a saving in that respect. So the device itself comes boxed as you see here, uh, Unitrend packaging and it does mark on the side there that's UT216C. Uh, there are four variants of this. The UT216A is the basic one. Uh, UT216B is a little bit more advanced, uh, increasing advance on the UT216C. Um, and the UT16D, as far as I'm aware, is the same as the UT216C, except it has an OLED display instead of the LCD display that you see on this one here. Uh, <clears throat> so what you get inside the cardboard box is the instrument packaged in a, a, a little like canvas bag. It's a very thin canvas bag. Um, no real padding to it at all. A little clip there for... Oh, I should say uh, elasticated band for the actual instrument uh, if you want it in there and then you've got a little pocket here um, elasticated top for putting the leads in um, I do find that quite annoying um, it can make it a little bit awkward getting the leads in and out and that elasticated top so it's not a fan of that um, <clears throat> but in honesty this actually sits mostly in my battery testing bag um, so I don't keep it in the case at all uh, so, so you get the leads with it as well, standard PVC leads, um, about a metre long these ones, fairly small probes on the end. They do have GS38 caps on them uh, that can be removed to reveal the probe tip there. Uh, you can, you don't get any crocodile clips with these, um, but what you can do, you can get these from RS Components which have a probe tip style connection and they do fit on, uh, as you see there. So you can, I use those with it. The, I keep those in the uh, battery bag as well and use them with these leads should I need crocodile clips. Uh, and they do fit on quite nicely. These are um, part number 816-170 from RS Components. Uh, you get them as a pair, a red and a black crocodile clip. And they retail for around about 10 pounds. Uh, in the UK, that's including uh, tax. Um, so that's the leads there to one side. You also get a thermocouple, which I hardly use at all. Um, but it's not too bad. It's like a braided kind of version. Um, K-type thermocouple. As you see there, that plugs into the bottom here. Uh, it comes out the bottom as would the connections for the probes as well. Um, uh, so that's the flat, and then you get a little bit of paperwork, uh, some sort of guarantee card there, um, and then you also get a link to a manual. Um, however, when I go onto the Unitrend website, I can't find any documentation under the UT. 216C page. Um, if you just Google UT216C manual, then you can find it that way from other websites and you can download it that way. But last time I looked, I couldn't find the actual manual on the Unitrend website. Um, so that's that bit of paper as well. And then you can get into the meter a little bit more. So, basic operation of the meter you can see uh, AC amps is the first position, and then there. Uh, DC amps, and then we have voltage, AC, DC, and frequency. That's changed through the selection button here. 
So it defaults into AC. First press takes you to Hertz. Second press gives you DC. And then press again, and it takes you back to AC voltage. Uh, our next dial round is ohms, capacitance, diode, and continuity. Again, you use the select button to page through whichever ones you want to get to. Match capacitance there, and then temperature, degrees C, degrees Fahrenheit. And you've got a, a separate Hertz function on the dial for whatever reason. And then you have an on contact voltage up there as well. So I'll just bring the lead in from the injection test set um, to show that off non cut out voltages. Sensors up here in the top of the clamp. Um, you can see there, it beeps away and the little light flashes uh, when you're close to it fairly. Yeah, not an overly sensitive one. But there you go, that's that. Um, auxiliary functions, you also have a torch, the meter has to be switched on but you've got a button here for torch that you hold down and press, not a particularly bright torch, uh, but it's there nonetheless. Uh, another press takes it off again, down here at the bottom you've got a hold function for uh, the instrument, uh, you've also, if you hold that in, Brings on the light for the display as well. That times itself out automatically, I believe, after around about 10 seconds. And we'll see. There you've also, there you go. Uh, you've also got a min max function here. And it, there's no averaging function on that, um, only uh, min and max. You have a relative function, um, so you can take differential readings. Uh, there's a relative there that works on, on the voltage function there, turn it off there, also works on DC current, also works on AC current, uh, on ohms, it doesn't appear to work on the ohms. Uh, it works on capacitance. It's interesting. Hmm. Okay, so it works on capacitance, but it doesn't work on ohms. Uh, and then finally, also for current, if you hold in the zero button, you get a inrush measurement. Don't know what the specs is on that. Um, it's not in the manual. Um, just that it's capable of doing it. DC as well. Hold it in. Doesn't work. So this is purely an AC current function. Yeah. Okay. So we'll stick it on the uh, current clamp table and we'll do some measurements. Okay. We're set up for the first set of tests. I'll have to do this as a, a bunch of tests. We've just got one single turn running through the clamp, and this will be naught up to 10 amps AC. So we'll let that run through. And specs are both the same for AC and DC current, 2.5% uh, plus 5 digits with 0 to 600 amps capability. So that's those four test points. I'll now reconfigure and do the test at a higher current level. Okay, these are the AC high current amperage tests. Okay, these are the low amp tests for DC current now. Mm. 
interesting, it's quite a ways out, isn't it? Okay. Okay, same current test points, but this time it will be on DC. So what could we get? 60.8 better, yeah. 115, 152. 13.2 mm. yeah seems to be a little ways out on the I'll stick a table up and see how they compare to what the expected values would be so this is the results up for the AC and DC current uh, you can see that the AC readings they're all within specification no problems although they are towards the top end of the tolerance bands as you see towards the right hand side of the table. Um, with the DC readings uh, you can see the first values just creep over the upper tolerance value. Um, the next readings at higher current are all within spec, the same as the AC readings. So yeah they are slightly out for the DC value, it's not the end of the world I guess, but it's something that we'd probably need to keep an eye on if you are continually uh, calibrating the instrument and using it for readings where the accuracy did actually matter. Okay, so we'll move on to some voltage tests now. Okay, so that's 6 volts AC going in, and we're reading 5.982, putting 50 volts, 49.89, uh, it's got 150. Hundred and forty-nine point seven at hundred and fifty volts, and finally three hundred two hundred ninety-nine point five. So that's pretty good AC voltage-wise. Just put it onto uh, frequency, which is forty-nine point nine nine hertz. There. Let's uh, just put it up to. Sorry, you won't be able to see that, but you're without the light on. Uh, 49.9 hertz there, let's put up to 100 hertz, 99.99 hertz there, and uh, we'll just slip him over now on DC volts, so then we'll take him back down to 6 volts, uh, so that's 6 volts DC, now yeah, we need 5.98, 150 volts DC, 149.7, 300 DC, 299.4. So, yeah, it's pretty accurate DC wise, I would say. Not too much of a problem there. Um, so, we'll just unplug him. In fact, we'll switch him off first so we don't zap ourselves because that would look bad on the video. And we'll plug him off there. And we will uh, move on to the next range, which is ohms continuity. And let's uh, get our resistance box out. Okay, so we'll do some resistance readings. Uh, that's 10 ohms there. Pretty good response. One ohm. Okay. That backlight is really quite annoying, isn't it? Uh, so we get 10 ohms, there's 100 ohms there, 1 kilo ohm, 11 k's, 100 k's there, 99.9, uh, 1 meg ohm. Just doesn't like responding to that first press. And uh, there's 10 mega ohms, uh, it goes up to 60 mega ohms which is there at uh, plus or minus one percent and two digits and then we are on 59.81 mega ohms on the reading so that sounds pretty good I would say and so yeah that's the uh, resistance readings we'll swap the decade box over and we'll do some capacitance readings there's our capacitance box, so capacitance we are up to 60 millifarads 
so let's try 100 nanofarads in there. That's 10 nanofarads there. Uh, that's one microfarad. Yeah, pretty fast response. Give it that. That's 10 microfarads. Yeah, not too bad. Go around to 90. 92 microfarads on 90 microfarads there. 93 it's gone up to now. So we'll see what the response is like at the bottom end. Uh, that's 0.1 nanofarads there. Nothing out of it. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Oh, there we go, so 0 0.4 nanofarads on my decade box, and I'm showing uh, 0.14 on the meter. And there's one nanofarad there, taking back down to zero. And 0 0.98 nanofarads, so reasonably accurate down at the bottom end. 11 nanofarads, 11.09. Yeah, so it's kind of one nanofarad up to the 60 millifarads, really. Okay, there's the table of results for the resistance and capacitance measurements. And you can see they are all within their respective tolerances. Um, so that's all good. We'll just take a quick look at the other two functions on this setting, um, the diode test and continuity. Okay, set up for continuity tests. I know this is something that people like to see being done. And... Uh, See how fast it responds, and it's pretty much not at all. There we go. Yeah. yeah, I don't know whether it's the leads or the meter. I see Darren Walker doing this test, and then he often repeats it with a set of Probe Master leads. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a set of them, but I think I'll order a set and just see because that's. I guess for electrician speed that's fine, but I know electronics wise people would not think too much to that. Um, let's flick it along again and we'll go to diode. Uh, so this is a stud diode, this is what I'm more used to in, in my role. And we'll go uh, 0 0.552 there. We'll go the opposite polarity. That shouldn't conduct all, which is I will add that, so that's all fine with that one as well. I'll just bring the key sight in alongside it and we'll just see what the voltages are that it kicks out on the various uh, ranges. Let's go back to, so we're back on resistance there. Now, so on resistance range, we're 0 0.5, 0 0.90 0 volts out. And 10 mega ohms, which is about right. Let's go continuity, it's sticking one volt out. And and there you see 3.25 volts out there for the diode test. Okay, that's those done. We'll just move on to the last few functions before summing up. So the other functions, yeah, temperature is, uh, which I can't really demo here too well, um, other than just putting the Thermocouple in, uh, put it in the right way, I'll try to, and flip him round, 1 degree C, uh, 21 degrees C, which is probably yeah, not far out, that's set to about 19, so not too bad, um, it will read from minus 40 degrees C up to 1000 degrees C, at plus or minus 2%, with five digits, and uh, you can flip it to Fahrenheit by pressing the yellow button, and we'll read from minus 40 to 1832 Fahrenheit. Uh, that's at 2% and 10 digits. So the only other function I didn't go into was uh, VFC mode when you're on voltage. Um, if you hold select this, goes into your little VFC. 
got a VFC symbol down at the bottom there now. Um, so you've got that for measuring voltage mode as well. It also works on AC current as well. So you've got VFC mode that I didn't talk about as well on that. Um, 6,000 count display, we've done 30 millimeter dual capacity on it. Uh, CAT 2,000 volts, CAT 3, 600 volts. And it takes three AA batteries in the back there. And there is Intertech um, independent assessment stamped on the back there as well. Uh, but nothing else, no VDE or CSA or anything or UL. So, uh, yeah, so there you have it. There's a little look and test of the Unity UT216C Hall Effect Current Clamp. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.